Today I'm gonna to compare the Blackmagic camera app with the Final Cut camera app. Both of these are free apps that elevate the camera in your iPhone. Now I posted a step-by-step -step tutorial on the Final Cut camera app a couple weeks ago when it first dropped. And some people in the comments were like, but the Black Camera Magic app does so much more. And to you, I say, you're right. It definitely does. Thanks for the content idea. In this video, we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison. I'm gonna show you what Blackmagic offers that the Final Cut camera doesn't, but there's there's also a couple of things that Final Cut Camera has that Blackmagic doesn't, and I'm gonna help you figure out which is the right app for you. All right, let's just dive right in. Let's first start with Codex. Blackmagic has many ProRes options, plus HVEC and H.264, while Final Cut Camera just has ProRes and HEVC. If you're not sure what this means, it's basically about file size and clarity. Apple ProRes has a beautiful picture, but it results in really large file sizes. HEVC is a newer format that has better picture quality than the old H.264, but the file sizes are even smaller. By the way, guys, I'm just gonna be going over the major settings in the Blackmagic camera app. If you want a more detailed tutorial, let me know down in the comments and I'll be happy to make that too. In every codec that Blackmagic offers, you can shoot in 4K, HD, or 720. And Final Cut Camera offers 4K and HD in ProRes format. And if you're shooting HEVC, you can go all the way down to 720. But really like no one needs to be shooting 720 in 2024. You know what I mean? Both apps shoot in all the standard frame rates, 24, 25, 30, and 60. But Blackmagic also shoots in 23.98, 29.97, and 59.94, which are considered more television friendly frame rates in the US and Canada. But the Final Cut camera also lets you shoot in higher frame rates for slow motion action if you're willing to sacrifice codec, color space, and resolution. So if you head down to HEVC and change your color space to SDR and change your resolution to 1080, you can shoot in 120 frames or even 240 frames. In terms of color space, Blackmagic and Final Cut Camera both offer Record 709, Record 2020 HDR, and Apple Log HDR. But Blackmagic also offers P3 D65, which is a wider gamut color space than Record 709. Now on both apps, you can easily switch between the different lenses on your phone. On the Blackmagic app, just touch the lens icon in the upper left to open up this menu and you can switch between those different lenses. And then from each of those lenses, you can hit the magnifying glass to zoom in and zoom out to fine tune your framing. And on the Final Cut camera app, your lens settings are right here on the UI by default. And then again, to zoom in or out, just hit the magnifying glass and push up or down on this slider. They both have the same shutter speed controls. And as far as ISO, they both have manual ISO controls, though Blackmagic has a wider range. In the Blackmagic camera app, if you set the shutter speed to auto, it will automatically adjust your ISO. But notice that whether you're in manual or auto, the iris is grayed out. The Blackmagic camera app adjusts your f-stops automatically depending on that shutter speed and ISO. On Final Cut camera, you can set your shutter and ISO manually, but if you use the auto function, you can still adjust the exposure bias. Before we go any further, if you like this video, if you feel like I'm helping you out, let me know, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Now let's talk about those exposure indicators. They both offer zebra lines to alert you to overexposed areas of your frame. The Blackmagic app even allows you to set the zebra's sensitivity. On the Final Cut camera app, I find the zebras really lag and they're either too sensitive or not sensitive enough. Adjusting your focus on each app is the same. You can select your focus area by tapping on the image using a slider or by selecting auto. Let's talk about focus assist. Blackmagic gives you two options for focus assist, either peaking or colored lines. In the peaking setting, it almost gives you a moire effect in the area that is in focus. If we switch to colored lines, they're just like easier to read and you can even change the color of your focus indicators. I think this could be really helpful. Let's say you were shooting something red and your focus indicator lines were hard to see because your object was red. It would be nice to be able to switch them to blue. Final Cut Camera also offers colored lines for focus peaking, but they are green and only green. And I think these are too sensitive. Look, somehow the plant and the books are both in focus and I find this confusing. On both apps, you can set the white balance as well. They both have sliders, so you can set the white balance manually. They both have presets for different lighting conditions, or you can just set it to auto on each of them. In terms of overlays, the Blackmagic app has so many guides, like a grid, a lot of aspect ratio guides in case you'll be cropping in on your videos during post. 
and even title safe guides that you can tighten up or widen out. There's also this false camera overlay to help you adjust your exposures. In the Final Cut camera app, you can overlay a grid and your only aspect ratio guides are square and four by three, which I find really weird. Who's using four by three? So obviously the Blackmagic app has a bunch of stuff that Final Cut Camera doesn't. I wanna show you a few other really cool features that I think you're gonna like. If we open the focus menu and then click down here on these three triangles, I can program different focal lengths. So I'm just gonna tap on the plant to bring it into focus. And then I'm gonna hit the yellow triangle that says one. Now I'm gonna tap on the books in the background and I'm gonna hit this teal triangle that is two. And now when I click these triangles on the right side of the screen, I'm shifting my focus from one object to the other. I love this. Another awesome feature in the Blackmagic Camera app is the LUT preview. So if we change our color space to Apple Log, you can see that the shot looks really washed out. But in my overlays menu, I can click down here on LUT and apply a LUT onto my shot so I can get a preview of what it will look like in post. So by default, the Apple Log LUT comes with the Blackmagic Camera app, but you can import your own and then switch between those LUTs. And it's important for you to know that you're not really applying the LUT to the shot in the camera, it's just a preview. You could apply the LUT in the Blackmagic app if you wanted to, but I would definitely not recommend doing that. That's definitely the kind of thing you wanna do in post. Another feature I really like that Blackmagic has is that you can save presets. What this allows me to do is save all of the settings I have on the app right now. So let's say my resolution, my frame rate, my shutter speed and ISO, my color temperature, anything I want. And then I can save this as a preset so I don't have to keep going back and programming that Blackmagic app over and over. But the Final Cut Camera app has a couple of one-ups on Blackmagic as well. For instance, it has almost a servo zoom, which means that you can create really smooth zooms in and zooms out with this slider here. And also you're gonna need the Final Cut Camera app if you wanna utilize the live multicam function in the Final Cut Pro for iPad app, which is so cool. I did a whole demo and tutorial about it. You definitely wanna check out. I will link to it down below so you don't miss that. So which is the right option for you? Obviously the Blackmagic Camera app is for a real true mobile filmmaker, somebody who really wants to dig into all of their camera settings and utilize all of these features. The LUT preview is great. I love that rack focus function. And you have all of these great overlays that are really gonna be essential for you if you're planning on editing in different aspect ratios. One drawback about the Blackmagic Camera app is that there are so many settings. And frankly, a lot of these icons I found to be really confusing. I can never remember which icon did what. And I feel like I wasted a lot of time clicking around looking for a particular setting. In addition, I would also say the Blackmagic Camera app has some stability issues. You can see during this screen capture that all of a sudden my picture went dark and I was going through all the settings, trying to figure out what went wrong. And then all of a sudden the picture came back. Very mysterious. The Final Cut Camera app, I would say is way more stable, but obviously you sacrifice a lot more settings, which could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. If the sight of that Blackmagic Camera app with all of those overlays is intimidating to you, I think you're gonna prefer Final Cut Camera. You could definitely see from the UI that the Final Cut Camera app was designed with a more simplistic workflow in mind for someone who prefers ease of use while they're shooting and doesn't have a a lot of need for some of these very specific settings. And so if you don't need all of those buttons on your screen like you get with the Blackmagic Camera app, I think you're gonna be really happy with Final Cut Camera. But you tell me, let me know in the comments which app are you gonna be using. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks to everyone who watches all the way to the end. I picked out some other videos I know you're gonna love and I'll see you again.